Let's solve this optimization problem from Larson's calculus. A rectangular page is to contain 24 square inches of print. The margins at the top and bottom of the page are to be one and a half inches, and the margins on the left and right are to be one inch. Instead of using the figure, we'll actually do a sketch. What should the dimensions of the page be so that the least amount of paper is used, which means we're trying to minimize the area of the paper with the constraint that we need 24 square inches of print, and of course, we need the given margins. Referring to our guidelines, the first thing we should do is identify given quantities and, if possible, make a sketch. Here's my rough sketch of the situation. This is our paper. You can see we have margins of one and a half inches on the top and bottom, and margins of one inch on the left and right. Inside, we have another rectangle. This is the print. We'll say the print has dimensions x by y. We know that x times y has to equal 24. That is a given quantity. The area of print has got to be 24. With that, we can move on to step two, writing a primary equation for the quantity that is to be maximized or minimized. In this case, we're trying to minimize the area of the paper, that's the amount we're using, and so we'll write an equation for area. With our figure, that's pretty easy to do. The area of the paper is just the base length times the vertical length, so to speak. This base length is x, the amount of print, plus one plus one because of those margins on the side. So what we could just call the width of the paper is x plus two. It's the print plus the margins of one inch each. Similarly, perhaps we call this the length of the paper is y, the amount of print, plus one and a half plus one and a half, the top and bottom margins. That's y plus three. So the area of the paper is x plus two times y plus three. Step three is to reduce this primary equation to one that has a single independent variable. You can see right now the equation has x and y, but to use our methods of calculus, we need to get it to a single independent variable. We can do that using our secondary equation, the equation that we wrote for the amount of print on the page. Let's just solve for y in terms of x. Then we can write the entire area equation in terms of x. Using the secondary equation, we know that y must equal 24 divided by x. Then we can plug that into the area equation and get an equation in one variable. And there we go. It turns into x plus two times 24 over x because that's y plus three. Once we distribute, we have x times 24 over x, which is 24. X times three is three x. Two times 24 over x is 48 x. And two times three is six. Then put the three x in front, 24 plus 6 is 30, and 48 over x is the same as 48x to the negative 1. This is our single variable equation for area, and now we just want to make sure we specify the domain of this equation, and then we can move on to finding the minimum. So that's step 4, determine the feasible domain of the primary equation. In this case, the only restriction we really have is that x has to be positive. Certainly the width of the paper can't be 0, otherwise there'd be no way to get 24 four square inches of print. So our domain is x greater than zero. Now we can take the derivative of our area equation and look for a minimum on this domain. To take the derivative, finding a prime, we just need to use the power rule. The derivative of three x is three, the derivative of 30 is zero, and the derivative of 48 x to the negative one is negative 48 x to the negative two. Now we wanna find critical values. So set this derivative equal to zero. There's also a critical value where x equals zero and this derivative doesn't exist, except x can equal zero because x has to be positive. So it's not actually a critical value. All right, so we set the derivative equal to zero and then solve for x. Add 48 x to the negative two to both sides, then divide both sides by 48 and invert them. That makes the three divided by 48 become 48 divided by three, and the x to the negative two becomes x to the positive two. Again, that's inverting both sides after dividing by 48. 
Now, 48 divided by 3 is 16, so 16 equals x squared. So x is plus or minus 4, but x has to be positive, so in fact, x equals 4. Because our domain is not a closed interval, we can't use the extreme value theorem, so we do need to use a derivative test to determine if x equals 4 is the location of a minimum or a maximum. Let's use the second derivative test. So take the derivative of the derivative, and again, that's just power rule. The second derivative is 96x to the negative 3, and for all positive values of x, our domain, this is definitely positive. Thus, the function is concave up because the second derivative is positive, and so indeed at x equals 4, we have a minimum as desired. Then we'll just write the conclusion. A, our function for area, has a minimum at x equals 4. Then that means y, which equals 24 over x, we did that at the beginning, y would have to equal 6 since x equals 4. And thus, the dimensions that will minimize the amount of paper used are 6 by 9, because remember the dimensions are x plus 2 by y plus 3. So 6 by 9. And that's an example of an optimization problem requiring us to minimize area by following our typical guidelines. Hope it was helpful, and I'll leave links in the description to other videos going over more optimization problems. Just to be